Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In our last video, we completed talking about all the basics about Python iteration using for and while loops. So from today's video, we'll try to get into a few examples to practice what we learned in the last couple of videos. So let's get into this. So the first example that we'll go through is to implement a function that returns an average of all the numbers in a list. So I think that this example will be a good question to refresh our memory. So uh, before I actually get into this question, I want you to pause the video for a second and implement this function on your own or start thinking about the strategy to implement this function. So we have many different ways that we can implement this. The most obvious way of doing this is to use the Python's built-in function sum to get the sum of all the numbers in the list, then divide that sum by the length of list one. So let me quickly implement that. So we're gonna have our list, list one uh, with the six numbers, four, five, and six. And let me also create a function, calculate average, and I'm gonna call this version one. And then it takes a list as an input. So I'm going to say a list, and then it's going to return sum of a list that we intake divide by length of a list. And let me also call this function. So calculate average version one, and then put the list one as our uh, argument. And let me also print this so that we can see the result. So if I run this, then you will see a 3.5 which is the average of all the numbers that we have in the list one. Uh, okay, so then now let's try to create another version where we do not use the built-in sum function so that we can practice the iteration of all the numbers in the list one. So for that, I'm going to create a different function here. So def calculate average version two, and then it takes a list as an input. And then in here, I'm going to have a variable called total and set that equal to zero so that we can actually add all the numbers in a for loop into the total variable. And I'm going to have a for loop here for number in uh, a list and total plus equal number. And at the very end, I'm going to return the total, which has all the numbers added up and then length of list one, actually length of a list. And then let me also call this print calculate, calculate average version two and then invoke this with our list one. And if I run this one more time, then you will see the same exact result 3.5 coming out from uh, this function as well as this function. Okay, so then now let's try to do this using the while loop and let's call this function as version three. So for that, let me first copy the list one above here so that we can see it below. And then let me also create another function. So that calculate average version three, and then it takes a list as an input. And there's a typo here, calculate. And then in here, I'm gonna have a two variables. The first one is a total and set that equal to zero. And then the next one is index and set that equal to zero as well. So the total variable will be responsible for storing all the data that we have in the list one. So we're gonna actually add all the numbers into the total variable, just like how we did it in the for loop. And the index variable is responsible for moving into the next iteration because we are actually using the while loop. And in below here, let's create our while loop here. So while index is less than length of the list one. So what we are saying here is that please perform the iteration as long as the length of list one is greater than the index. And in below here, we're gonna actually add each of the numbers in the list one into the total variable. So total plus equal um, a list square bracket uh, index. And this length of list one should be a list as well, uh, because we are actually performing this based on the list that we get inside this function, which is a list. And uh, in here, we just added the uh, a list square bracket index, meaning that each of the numbers in the list one based on the index into the total variable for each iteration. And let's also not forget to increment our index so that we don't end up with an infinite loop. So index plus equal one after each iteration. And at the very end, when the while loop iteration is over, we're gonna return the total divided by length of a list. And let me also call this so we can do print calculate average version three and pass the list one as the argument. So if I run this one more time, then you will see the 3.5 here once again. So we have our three different versions to calculate the average of all the numbers in the list one. We can test these functions uh, by uh, printing a different numbers here. So I can put a seven here in the list one. 
for the last function. And then if I try to run this one more time, then you will see a different average being calculated out because we added one more number. And also there are many other ways that you can perform this type of operations. But I just wanted to show you the three most basic ones as a refresher. And I also want to mention about the function that we've created here. So in each of the function that we have, we take a list as an input. And we only operate on that input list, which is a list here, instead of referring to the list one directly. And this is intentionally done this way so that we can keep the functions that we've created independent of the variable that we create outside of this function such as list1. So what this means is that if we have a different input list such as list2, so list2 with a 3 value, 1, 2, and 3. So if you want to calculate the average of the list2, all you have to do is to pass the list2 as the argument here and then just run the function one more time then you will actually see the correct average being calculated out because you've just passed the list to here. And this is only doable because we are only referring to a list within this function, meaning we are not referring list1 or list2 inside this function so that you don't necessarily have to change the code inside the function. Instead, we just need to pass the different argument into the function call and not worrying about changing any of the variable name that we have inside the function. Okay, so in this example that we're going to go through requires a bit more thinking than the previous one. So the question here is to write a function that returns a string with no duplicate consecutive letters. And I have some sample inputs and outputs here. And same as before, I want you guys to pause the video for a second and start thinking about the strategy for this question. Okay, then now let me talk about the strategy that I was thinking of. So what we are trying to do here is to remove the duplicate consecutive characters in a string. So if we can generate indexes for each of the characters that we have in the string, so index of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and basically compare the current index character with the next index character. So for the initial iteration, I want to compare the character A and B. And in the second iteration, I want to compare B and B. Then I want to compare B and C then to C and D. And so by comparing every characters one by one, I can create a logic where if the current character is not equal to the next character, then I want to actually add that character into the new variable that we create. And the function will return the new variable after all the iteration is over. So enough of the explanation, let's get into the implementation here. So I'm gonna create a string one variable and then set that equal to one of the sample input. And then let me also create a function. So that remove duplicate consecutive letters and then it takes the a string as the input and in here I'm gonna create a variable called new variable and set that equal to empty string for now then in below I'm gonna create a for loop so for index in range and then I'm gonna use a string so length of a oops string and then in here I'm gonna do a minus one here so I'm using the range function to create the indexes for the string one but I'm setting the stop index to be the length of string 1 minus 1 because we don't want to get the index out of range error for the last element in the list 1. And I'll explain more about this in detail a bit later. Then inside the for loop, let me create an if statement to check whether the current index character is equal to the next index character. So for that, we can use the string indexing here. So what I can do here is if a string square bracket index is not equal to a string square bracket index plus one meaning the next index character so if the character for the current index is not equal to the character for the next index meaning it is not a duplicate consecutive character then i want to append the character into the new string so what we can do here is the new variable plus equal a string of the index meaning the current index character so the new variables will actually hold all the non duplicate consecutive characters so in the initial iteration uh, the character will be a and we're gonna compare a with b and the system will find that a is not a duplicate consecutive character because it went inside the if block so it's gonna add an a into the new variable and for the second iteration the system will find that b and b is actually the consecutive duplicate characters so this uh, first b will not be added to the new variable and in the third iteration it's going to compare the b and c and it will find that b is not a consecutive duplicate character because now we are comparing b and c so the second b will be added to the new variable and same goes on until the end of the index here so then now we have our logic here let me return the new variable so return new variable and in below let me uh, call this function so print remove duplicate characters and then I can pass the string one 
as the argument here. And if I run this function, let's see what happens. So when I run this, then you will see ABC printed out. So it works somewhat, but not completely, right? Because we are actually expecting ABCD but the output that we got is the ABC. So if we take a look at this, the duplicate elements are removed, which is good, but the last character D is not being printed out. So obviously there is something wrong here. So let's try to debug this together. I think that this will help us to understand a bit better about the indexes and index out range error. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is to add some print statements so that we can actually see what is the current index and what is the next index being generated. So within the for loop, I can actually put the print statement here, print index index and also the index plus one so that I can see the next index and within the if statement let me also put the same thing index index plus one but to differentiate it with the above print statement let me just put some exclamation marks here and in below here let me also put the current index character here print a string index and so if I run this one more time, then now you will be able to see all the indexes being generated here. So let's walk through uh, each of the iteration together. So the length of the string one minus one is four. So this means that this for loop will iterate four times starting from zero to three because the stop index is exclusive. So in the initial iteration, we have a zero as the current index and one as the next index, meaning we are comparing A and B because uh, A has the index of zero and B has the index of one and A and B is not equal. So it went inside the if block and A, which is the current index character was added to the new variable. And in the second iteration, the current index is one and then the next iteration is two. So we are comparing this uh, first B and second B here. And since uh, these two B's are equal, uh, it did not come inside the if block, meaning the first B we find it as a consecutive duplicate character. And in the third iteration, we are comparing B and C. So the B has the index of two and C has the index of three. So the B and C is not equal. So it went inside the if block and the current index character, which is uh, the second B here, was added to the new variable. And in the last iteration, the current index is three because we set the stop index to be the four and stop index is exclusive. So this loop's last iteration's index will be three. So we are comparing the index of three and four, which is the character C and D, and C and D is not equal. So the current index character, which is C, was added to the new variable. And that's why you are seeing the ABC as the end result here. So then what we can see here is that the last character D was skipped because we are only iterating one before the last character's index, which is three. So then you might think, hey, uh, since we need to actually iterate through the last character, which is D here, wouldn't it make sense for us to delete this minus one in the range function and make this loop iterate from zero to four so that we have access to the last character D. And unfortunately, this idea will not work. Why? Because when current index is four, the next index will be five, right? And in the if statement, we are actually comparing the current index against the index to the next. Uh, meaning if the current index is four, then we're gonna actually point to the character D here and we are comparing that against a string index plus one, which is five, and the index of five in the string one does not exist. So if I delete this minus one here and run this function one more time, then you will see an index out range error in this if statement. So let me actually generate the error here. So let me delete the minus one and then run this one more time. Then you will see the string index of range error in the if statement that you see. So then how can you actually append the last character D to the ABC where the new variable contains. So the solution for this is pretty simple. We just need to get the last character manually from the string one and return it with a new variable because the new variable contains ABC anyway. So in here, what I can do is the return new variable plus, and we're gonna use the string indexing here as well. So I'm gonna do a string square bracket minus one to only access the last character that we have in the string one, which is passed to this function, which is the a string here. So then if I run this one more time, but before I run it, let me uh, not forget to put the minus one back in here. And if I run this, then you will see the ABCD printed out, which is the expected output that we have for this ABBCD input here. And we can also try to put a different uh, input here that we put as a sample. So let me just copy this Python here and then just run it one more time. Then you will see a Python here as well. And same thing for the Danny. So control C and B and run it. Then you will see a D, A, and Y printed out, which is the expected result.
Okay guys, that's it for this video. We've had a few examples of how we can actually apply iteration concept in few different examples. In next few videos, we'll continue to have more examples about iterations as iteration is a key concept in any type of programming. And if you find my videos helpful, please don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next videos.